can you believe that so far we've only done one prompt in the create this book? I mean, that's kind of embarrassing. We've got the book, let's do this. The second prompt in the create this book free is create bewilderment. Draw something completely ridiculous and pointless on this page. Now, I'm not going to lie, when I first saw this prompt, I thought of a circus, then had a little flip through the book and realized that there actually is a prompt called something like create a circus. So that's that. As long as I remember, we will be doing that concept again, but for that prompt. Not this time. This time, it's something bewildering. I grabbed this roll of drawing paper that I got from Ikea and tried my absolute hardest to gently remove the labels. But what is that? They put the roll in plastic and then stuck two entire huge stickers on the actual paper when they could have just slipped some paper underneath the plastic. But no, the stickers have ruined the edge of the paper and even further down. Trying to figure out how best to salvage this, I'm just cutting a section out right in the middle. I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and get that sketch done and oops, we did it. And look at this stranger's little sketch. I'm thinking you might need a little bit of an explanation, so here goes. Something bewildering. I thought of something that has involuntarily lived in my head for years. I saw a post on Reddit, and since I had to experience this, I feel like it's only fair that you do too. People were sharing the worst alternate endings to movies. And there were some pretty bad ones, but this one for Harry Potter took the top spot. The concept that an entire franchise of eight movies spanning across fight scenes and deaths and trials and tribulations, that everything, all of that, could come to a close with this particular ending is horrifying. So here it is. The final scene is Harry in a therapist's office in a psychiatric ward. The therapist tries to convince Harry yet again that he needs to face the reality that his parents died in a car crash, that watching it happen and then being raised by his cruel aunt and uncle who locked him in a cupboard under the stairs gave him severe mental illness, delusions of grandeur and hallucinations. That this whole wizard school doesn't exist and he needs to face the truth. Harry stands, shouts stupefy while pointing a pen at the therapist, before grabbing the broom in the corner of the room, leaping out the window with it between his legs and plummeting 40 feet to his death. And I think that's the worst possible alternate ending to the Harry Potter franchise. I mean, there are others. There's also an idea that Harry Potter destroys Voldemort and all the Horcruxes, only to find that he has one in himself. Voldemort's soul takes over Harry's body and Hermione and Ron need to kill Harry to finally kill Voldemort. This ending, I don't actually mind. It's not a particularly happy ending, but it has been done before in movies and it actually kind of makes sense. I mean, some of Voldemort's power did go into Harry, so why not? It is plausible. I'm not angry at that ending, but the therapist's office. Can you imagine the outrage if that was the ending? I've not read the books, but I mean, I doubt the books would have been made into films if that was the ending. It would be like pulling a Game of Thrones, but worse. So much worse. And don't get me wrong, I love Game of Thrones. I still think it's a fantastic series and it should be remembered like that. The ending is just a little disappointing because it's sped up and poorly written, but the rest of the show is good. Back to the therapist's office though. This concept lives in my mind rent free because it's so awful. It genuinely would completely ruin the entire franchise. It's so bad. It's crazy and wild and it's what I thought of for Bewildered which also kind of works because it does say ridiculous which is like ridiculous so it does kind of work so we're drawing harry potter in a therapist's office holding up a pen going a little bit crazy with a quote i don't often include text in my art it's something i've been doing a lot more lately for the daily doodle diary challenge which is where I'm attempting to draw every single day of 2024. And it's been a lot of fun so far. 
I think the text can really add more to a piece of art and in this case an explanation of what we're actually looking at. The therapist saying you're not a wizard Harry, a take on the iconic quote that Hagrid says, I just think it's kind of cool. We're using acrylic markers by Artex and it's only my second time using this art medium. The first was painting four pages of art centered around Greek mythology where we painted Medusa and Michelangelo's David. I'll pop that video down below because it's edited in the same way as this one but honestly it's some of the best art I've created in a long while so it might be worth the watch after this one. The markers aren't actually dried up I started filling the background with that grey, which to be fair was a little bit dry, but that was just unlucky. And I thought, what if this entire piece has this scratchy, almost comic book look to it? So it could be a dream or a memory, and not so much an actual movie scene? Because we do paint movie scenes for the scene series here on my channel, and it's kind of important that this doesn't look like an actual scene from an actual movie. I think the sketchy look helps with that. We're all done and moving on to the worst stage, cutting the art in half. I hate this part. We're going to glue in each of those pages and completely forget that the prompt needs to be on this page too. The easiest thing is just for us to write down the prompt on this page in a corner that fits best. It's the easiest thing to do. I think it looks really cool but we'll have a closer look later on. And with the first prompt all done we're going to move straight on to the second. The next prompt of the create this book is to create stained glass. Use only straight lines to make a design and colour in the shapes created. Since we've created something rather silly, now we can actually make some art. I was super excited to see this prompt because what medium do you think of when you see this prompt? I think of watercolour. Alcohol markers and water-based markers probably would work too since they can have a transparent look, but I thought of using a black waterproof fine liner and then just adding paint on top, which is a really fun and simple way to create. And watercolour does kind of look like stained glass. Unfortunately, I then looked for reference photos of actual stained glass, and it turns out every single section is a different colour. In my head, I thought it was just flowy colour all over with black lines, but no, the black separates each distinguished colour, meaning we have to paint every section separately, which probably added an extra hour to this process but it's completely worth it for what we create in the end. I don't know about you, but when I think of stained glass, I think of a church with stained glass windows. The idea I had was, what if it's kind of inverted? Like, it's the opposite? The entire church is made of stained glass window panes, and then the actual windows are just basic wood, almost like a super colourful greenhouse, which I had a look online and did see some pictures like that, but I think they were AI. So we don't really have much of a reference for this one. The thing that I love about the Create This Book is that it's so fun. It's a place where I can be a little bit silly and create random art and I don't need perfect references. I can just have a go and fill the page. So that's what we're doing here. I only did a simple pencil sketch of the church outline. We have no sketch for the pattern. The church sketch is all done. We're gonna rub out those pencil lines and move on to watercolor now. The really fun part. I filled the background with water and we're adding paint lines in every direction. When I say that I'm picking any and every color, I'm not lying. We're trying to cover every single color but well, really only the nice bright ones. But what is the background? Well, if it's stained glass, when light shines through, the colors reflect. So that got me thinking, what would happen if the light was inside the church? Generally churches are dark and the sun shines in so the colored light is reflected inside on the floor. But what if it's dark outside and the church is lit up from inside? Do the colors reflect outside? I honestly don't know, but I like the idea, so we're going to run with it. If the coloured greenhouse church thing is completely lit up inside, then maybe all the colours will glow outside, right? 
And with that many crazy colours going on, like there's a lot of separate colours here, it could look really cool. It could look like random rainbows of colour going in every direction. So that's what we're making. The technique we're going for is efficiency. Grab a colour, paint three blobs far away from each other and move on. Unfortunately, I categorically underestimated just how many blobs there were and ended up looping back around quite quickly i must say the correct amount should have been at least like 10 blobs per mixture before moving on so it's not very efficient saying that i don't know if i'll ever do this again so i don't know what good that knowledge is now it's a lot of fun this technique i don't know what to say about it we're coloring blobs with all the blobs filled in we have completed our stained glass church now what now it does look a bit odd we have a church, we have light, we need ground. Right now it's looking like something imaginary in our heads. It needs to almost look like a landscape. So we're grabbing green and attempting to add some trees, plants, grass. But this isn't looking good. It will do, it works kind of ish. We're done, or so I thought. First what we're gonna do is grab the dreaded guillotine. Let's slice our cute piece of art in half. Honestly, the worst part by far. Each page has a prompt and we need that to show. Yes, I did completely forget again. We need to cut a window. Glue those halves onto each page and then we need to tackle this hole. Reaching for the awkward little craft knife, we're cutting around the prompt to create our window and that looks weird. It doesn't look great. So I'm getting those water-based markers and trying to make it look a little bit more like a cute little drawing of a glass window. I don't know. It ruins this piece, so let's try and ignore it. And finally, let's have a quick flip through the pages we've created and how cool is to create this book looking already? I wanna take my time with this book and create pieces of art that I'm genuinely happy with. Whether they're actually good or just plain silly. Next time we'll be creating two Halloween themed pages for the next two prompts. I'm super excited to show you those. They were a lot of fun to make. Subscribe so you don't miss that one and I will see you in a few days time. Bye bye!